Welcome back into the Penn Live Wrestling Podcast. Dustin Hawkins with here, joined once again by Dave Hecker. It's part two of our review of the 2020-21 wrestling season. Previously, we talked about the unique challenges that a pandemic year presented to wrestling, all kinds of different formats, including wearing masks. If you missed that episode, you want to catch it, you can access that. And every other episode that we will do all season long by subscribing on Spotify, Apple, and iHeartRadio. This time around, we're going to talk about some of the individuals looking at last postseason, three state champions and two more state finalists from District 3. Dave, let's start with somebody that you should know pretty well at this point in time. Jake Lucas, your state champion at 215 pounds. He went uh, 29-1, and beat Josh Harkless from Wilson in the 215-pound state finals. Harkless had beaten him the week before out at the Super Regional in Altoona. How special was that year for him and for you as a coach to guide a kid to that upper echelon, to get to that promised land, you know, how rare that is. No, it is such a difficult thing to do. And and, and I think that's the one thing and and any, all those guys like to, to, to achieve a a state title, even a state medal and, you know, to do all that, you know, it's such a difficult task. And, um, you know, Jake is such a good kid and, you know, just, just overcome adversity, through his four years of wrestling, um, you know, matured, uh, listened to coaching and, and just, it all came together. And, and, and that's the best way I can describe it at that state tournament. Every, it all came together. He got the job done, wrestled an outstanding tournament, beat some good wrestlers there, um, on his way to, to then, you know, win win the state final there in overtime. So it was, it was incredible. Um, off to the Naval Academy. I, I, I talked to him actually quite a bit, and uh, he's doing really well there. He did uh, he did injure his shoulder, so he had surgery on his shoulder here. So he'll be missing probably this 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 first year of, of wrestling season. But either way, the kid's in in good spirits. He he's really doing well on the academic side, on the military life side of things, and uh, which I expected. I mean, you know, like like I said, the kid's a great kid. He's going to do well whatever he does. So um, yeah, the the uniqueness of him and I, and and I you know I got to know him a good bit and you know seeing the degree to which he sought out punishment you know because he understood <laughs> he understood the more punishment you take behind the scenes the better you're going to get for whenever the real the real matches count and to his credit was just looking he was look and and this is the the awesome thing about wrestling is looking for a chance to lose you know that right. that's what he's going for and practice wherever he's looking for a chance to lose because those are where the growth moments happen no doubt and i mean the biggest growth for him was in the practice room and, and, you know, I mean, here's a kid that really his whole life, like, I mean, he was the big, strong kid. And he used to tell us like how elementary wrestling, like he would just pin people and, and not even in wrestling moves, just being you know bigger and stronger. So now you have to take a kid who's done that his whole life and now teach him how to to wrestle against people that, you know, at some point here, it's going to catch up, you know. And uh, the, our, our coaches staff just did a great job. Um, you know, he, he, Mark Murphy was his junior high coach and and. Uh, who eventually helped me out at the high school level when Jake read through and, uh, and then Rustin Barrick, uh, you know, son of, uh, you know, former head coach, Roger Barrick, who was my coach, uh, Rustin wrestled at buck now and really was Jake's workout partner. And, and when I say like Jake came into the room and got completely torched, um, that happened every day. I mean, every, every day, uh, Jake, Jake was a puddle and, and what he went through uh, to ultimately achieve what he achieved. There's not too many people out there that would, that would consistently go through that to, to get to that goal. And, uh, you know, it was just, it was a testament to him, uh, and a testament to, to Rustin as a coach, um, just really got him ready to go. And, and like you said, I, you know, as much as it is my, my job to get kids to win, it's, it's my job as a, a wrestling coach to make sure kids get losses too. You know, if you have a kid that goes through the season undefeated, uh, you know, unless he's somebody that's just, you know, not losing that you have, uh, you know, you got to find them losses. Uh, and, and cause there's so much growth from that. And, um, you know, we did a great job of exposing, uh, you know, Jake and, and all our guys, you know, we always wrestled a tough schedule and, uh, you know, take those losses, learn from them, improve, grow from those losses. And uh, he did all that. And, uh, you know, great kid, great work ethic. Um, couldn't, have, couldn't have really happen to a better kid in my opinion. 
And I think, you know, you spell out kind of the interesting challenge of, of being a coach and, and having on one end of the spectrum, your first year kid that you're trying to get the basics installed. And then you have on the other hand, you know, your high, high level kid who, you know, is in pursuit of a state title and trying to figure out all the buttons you need to push to get him what he needs and get him where he wants to go. And in this case, I mean, yeah, R- Rustin Barrick to, to, to picture Jake Lucas, 215 pounds, looked like he rejoiced in the idea of gaining uh, gaining weight and putting muscle on to get up to that that 215 um but to, to hear that he's a puddle with rustin barrick should tell you something about where rustin's still at to this day yeah yeah no no doubt and uh it, it was and and really those challenges like you were saying before about you know different levels of kids it was even more challenging last year during that covid year because it hit like a point where okay so what are we doing? You know what I'm saying? Like, are we going to pursue like this team thing where, you know, if something goes down with COVID now it affects everybody in the team or do you attend, you know, do you, do you attend less? Do you do less to try to make sure that the better guys in your team don't get sick? And, you know, I mean, even, even last year, uh, us as a team, I, I feel like, you know, now we didn't make the playoffs. We, we missed it by one spot, but I had talked to RAD about not even, I don't even think we were going to do it. And my only justification is I, I don't care what anybody says. I argue this point Tom blue in the face, but of every team in district three of every wrestler in district three, Jake had the best shot to win a state title. And, and, you know, not, not those other guys that couldn't have done it, but I mean, when you looked yeah. at everybody, like he was the guy that had the shot of, 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 you know, better shot than anybody in the district. So that being said, like we were, it, it turned to him. Like at the end of the day, we had a team during the team season, but once that end of the year hit, uh, we were, our focus was on, on him and some of our individuals to get them, to get them safely to the highest, you know, part of the individual season that they could get to. So um, it, it did offer some challenges, but um, you know, obviously we, we got there and everything was good. So, well, let's look at some of these other guys around, um, district three and we'll, st- we'll stick with triple A since that's where we began with, with Jake here, but just looking at, um, state champions in the triple A rank. So Caden Williams from Mannheim township. Uh, I'm sure you got, you, you might not have studied him ultra closely, but you were at the same place as him, as him. You saw him, you know, at, at the district three championships, uh, wrestles at 106 pounds. He and Camden, his twin brother were huge for their weight classes. And we'll touch on the challenge that that presented here in a moment. But Caden Williams, the interesting thing with him was he was, re- he was pretty sick in Altoona for the super regional. And I think having to gut it out at that super regional round, um, yeah kind of helped him it helped pay some dividends at, at the state tournament too when he got a little healthier but he was accustomed to wrestling through that adversity uh really wrestled a bunch of tight matches along the way ended up winning that 106 pound title uh in triple a yeah you know those two are tough and i remember last year them being freshmen you know you heard a little buzz down in the Lancaster Lebanon about them. And I, I talked to, I mean, Billy Chamberlain was, you know, who's now the head coach at Cumber Valley. He was the head coach at Mannheim. So I talked to him. I even talked to John Clark, their head coach a little bit. I know him fairly half decent. And he, and he was telling me how, how tough these two are. And, and then I, you know, talking to some of the other coaches, like, Hey, like, these two are the real deal. Well, then like you get to the postseason and watch them wrestle. And I mean, just, you know, their, their mat awareness, their, their, their wrestling IQ, like, yeah, yeah, they're just very, uh, very tough, man. And, and both of them tough from the top position, um, which I, I feel like, you know, when you, when you are, when you on top, when you have the ability to ride people out at the high level, um, man, does that really open up doors for you? You know what I'm saying? As far as, uh, you know, beating good guys and, and winning big matches, but, but either way, you know, those two are, are tough and uh, it's going to be exciting to see where their career takes them here uh, the next three years, man. Uh, they're, they're fun to watch too. So, um. so I, I talked, I talked to both of them over the summer and Caden Williams was on the U S um, uh, cadet world team in Greco uh, went overseas to compete um camden williams and it looks like um they both said both of them hit a growth spurt (laughs) they're big already and they both hit a growth growth spurt in the postseason and camden williams did not ultimately make weight uh at the state championships which you can kind of picture the uh, you know how that weighs on a kid uh moving forward and you know understood understood there but camden you know was was the one who made i think the bigger (laughs) splash because of what he was able to do with aiden lewis from cedar cliff uh in the district uh, semifinals, I believe. Um, and 
yeah, using yeah. that Greco background of his own. And he ended up beating a state champ, Vinny Kalkiri from greater Latrobe at, at the super regional round. So certainly can see the upside there with, with both of them, but with Camden, you know, I think it's not always as simple. And I spelled this out in the notes that I sent you too, but not always as simple as saying, well, it's an important wrestling tournament. Why can't you just make weight? You know, with, with this age group and, and stuff like that, like things just happen and it's not always as simple and easy and clear cut as we want to pick as we no, want to make it. it. It isn't. And, and, you know, I, I, in my coaching career, multiple times you've had guys miss weight. Um, you know, and, and as or get coach, in trouble or get in trouble or whatever too. Yeah. That. Yeah. No, I, I, uh, you know, as a coach, you, you can't be there 24 hours of the day. You know, you train them, you, you run them, you, you, you get their weights close, to, you know, to where they need to be. Then they go home and you're, you can't be there, you know? So, um, and, and also you're dealing with 15, 16 year old kids, 17 year old kids. And, you know, as much as we want to say, you know, I, you know, my kid would have made weight or I, I'd have held him up all night making weight. I mean, the reality of the situation is, um, no, you wouldn't have, you know what I mean? Um, but, uh, you know, it's tough, man. I, I think that, you know, the kids, kids deal with a lot, uh, you know, at the age that they are, they're freshmen in high school, the growth spurt thing happening, um, you know, all of that uh, factors in. And, and I think, uh, Obviously, that's a that's a lesson learned, and then hopefully, uh, you know, that, that never gets repeated again um, from either of these two, which I, I don't think it will. And I mean, ultimately, you can say that kid, you know, maybe threw away a state title. You know, I mean, didn't make weight, and you know, could have won a state title. And uh, he he was know, the fa- he was a favorite in my eyes. Watching yeah, what he yeah. did with uh, with Aiden Lewis, who was a state runner up the year before, and watching him, you know, throw around and uh, Vinny Kilkiri, who was a state champ the year yeah, before, nine seven in the finals of the Super Region, man, it was uh, awesome it was match. Yeah, yeah, great match. But just like you said, I mean, here's Kilkery who pinned the guy in the year before in the state finals. And, you know, Williams takes him out in the finals of the Super Regional. Um, just impressive, impressive two kids there. And uh, definitely going to be fun to watch here moving forward. And, uh, you know, as far as the weight thing, like I said, kids live and learn. And and as coaches, you learn too. And, you know, I, man, it's tough. And, and, and I don't know. I feel like as a coach, it was something the older I got, the more I worried about. You know, like, you know, before a match or well, we, we came in right after school, you know, I, I checked everybody's weight. I made sure they were on. And then an hour before weigh-ins, everybody had to show back up and I checked it again because guess what? Things happen between when you have them in school and when they come back for the match. And that's reality. They're kids. They're, they make, they don't make good decisions all the time. Right. That's why they're kids. So you check them again and then, you know, you have to take care of the guys that are over. And then right before weigh-ins uh, you're worried because who knows what can, yeah, I'm, I'm telling you, it's, it's constant. The worst part of any wrestling match for me was weigh-ins you know if I could get everybody weighed in skin check good everything good to go for the match well now we're we're ready to wrestle you know the wrestling will take care of itself but everything else leading up to that point was the most nerve-wracking part for me because some of that's uncontrollable by you as a coach you know I mean I, I think uh you know, it's just, it's one of those deals where, you know, the kids have to be accountable. Um, parents have to be accountable. Coaches have to be accountable. And uh, again, it goes back to that all coming together piece that I mentioned before about, you know, winning the state title. So the uniqueness of wrestling, it's not just about showing up and competing and being prepared from a mental and physical standpoint. It's also the weight and the skin and all the oh, things everything. that you, uh, you know, you got to control going into it. Everything. Uh, Carl, Carl Schindeldecker. A uh, runner up, you know, state silver went 23 and two. Um, his rise as a wrestler going back to his um freshman year coincided with a with a, a series that he had with one of your guys, Ben Mon. Yeah, and yeah. I remember being surprised with how tough Carl Schindeldecker wrestled Ben Mon and, and not really knowing much about Carl at that point. Well, he's been through it, you know. He he was a bronze medalist um at 113 as a freshman. Yeah. He uh, did not make it to the state tournament as a sophomore. He ran into Will Betancourt, who was the uh, ultimate state champ at, at the district level, and got not, got knocked out of um, ended up being knocked out of that tournament. There comes back, and I think validates you know probably everything that you've seen from him. Just um, a tough kid. He's funky. He's long. I think what he did last year was add a little bit and be a little bit more attack oriented. You know, he lost to Mac church from Waynesburg in the state finals. He lost to Mac church in the super regional finals as well. Tough yeah. matches, both of them. And Mac church was, I, I think you could definitely say was, was yeah. the better kid of the two, but it was very close. And I thought Carl wrestled extremely well the entire postseason. 
No, I, I agree with you. I mean, that was one of the matches. 120 pounds was one of the matches that was a, a final repeat, you know, from the Super Region to the finals where Church had beat Schindeldecker four to three in the Super Regional in a good match. And then, uh, you know, I actually thought Carl would win. I, I felt like, you know, winning, beating a tough guy two weeks in a row in the finals, the same guy is a tough thing to do. Um, but then Church beating 2-1 in an ultimate tiebreaker. But, uh, you know, Carl is has an uncanny ability to – to, he's tough to score on, very tough to score on. And, uh, you know, he's quick. Uh, again, I'm going to go back to the on top, okay? Here's a kid that can turn you and ride you on top, okay? And, and, that, and when you're talking high-level matches, that one point, if you can ride somebody out, you know what I mean? If you, you know, he's tough with legs and you, you, you can ride somebody out, you're going to be in matches. You want to beat somebody that, you, you, that you've never beaten before, ride them out. You know, that, that, that's step one. Ride that guy out. Take away that point. And, uh, you know, I, I think, you know, Carl just from from his sophomore year in which, man, he just had a rough year that postseason, like you, you mentioned, um, to come back, uh, you know, last year during the COVID year and and get it done and, and pick up a silver medal. And and again, like, you know, he's he's a physical kid. He's tough. Uh, you know, he, he wrestles all the time. He's, he's a seasoned wrestler. He's quick. He's, he, you know, he's also well coached. I mean, let, let's face it, you know, Menser is a guy that, you know, repeatedly puts his high level wrestlers in, in good spots come the postseason every year and his kids are ready to wrestle. And you take all that and you throw it and you mix it together. Um, the outcome is, you know, high medals. So um, it'll be interesting to see what he does again this year. I think, you know, with the with what he did last year and the confidence coming back, he's definitely going to be District 3's, uh, one of District 3's better wrestlers and at least hope for a, a state title. Yeah, just like you said with about Jake, you know, he's going to be high on that list of most likely District 3 guys to win that state title. Sure. Uh, a couple sure. other guys I want to touch on quick. One's uh, Matt Repost from Central Dolphin. Aw- awesome wrestler. I thought he had an unbelievable district tournament. Um, and then when, when he got to super regional, he's finished seventh at the, at the state tournament. Uh, when he got to super regionals is when you really started to see kind of that, um, philosophy that Jeff Swagger and his crew used. And I, I can't blame him for it. And he, he spelled this out for me, the decision that you make when it comes to, especially the unique COVID circumstances, you know, he was aiming to try to be quicker, fresher, better conditioned. And in a couple of these weight classes, Matt Repost, one of them, you know, he was a little bit on the small side for, for that weight and ended up running into some big, strong 126s who were coming down um, to wrestle that weight class. And I thought in some of these matches, that was, that was the difference. Can you just walk me through, you know, what you're deciding as a coach, maybe in that situation, not, not even, not even looking at this situation specifically, but the decision you have to make along with the kid and feeling where he's going to be the most comfortable, how you go about deciding, do you want to suck and get down and try to be among the bigger kids? Or do you want to feel fresh and not worry about weight cutting and kind of deal with the consequences on the other end? There's no right or wrong answer. I think. Yeah, it's a, it's a tough one. I mean, I think first you got to start at hydration test. Like, you know, at the beginning of the year, we all take a test, right? And it says you can get down to a certain weight, okay? Safely, health, you know, health-wise, everything clear there. You can safely get down to a weight. My thing is if you are certified at a weight, you need to get to that weight, okay? You know, especially for the postseason. Now, again, I'm not second-guessing, Jeff. I'm not second-guessing their decisions. You know, obviously, the kid has to be in. You know what I mean? If the kid doesn't want to do it, it don't matter how much you want them to do it. But at the end of the day, you're going to get your optimal performance at the lowest weight that you can physically go. You know, and if and if a kid is certified at – 162, but instead wants to go 172. Well, then guess what? That, that's fine. And you can feel fresh, but at the end of the day, those guys going to be dropping from 180 pounds down to 172. And, and if the results aren't what you want, then I, I don't, you know, it is what it is. Right. So, um, but last year being the COVID year, it, it, you know, staying healthy, uh, not sucking weight all year, there, there's something to that, you know, and, uh, you know, I mean, heck repost is a, is an incredible wrestler and, uh, you know, at the end of the day, um, you know, the kids have to make the decision to, to do it. But um, more than not, I mean, I, I would definitely err on the side of getting down to that lowest weight that you can, you know, and, and being ready to go for the postseason, even if it's during the, during the year. You know, hey, you might not wrestle, you know, 145 pounds um, until – the postseason, you might wrestle 152 all year, but then you're starting to descend for the end of the year and you get locked in at your lowest weight. And, uh, you know, I, I feel like that's the, the side that I always 
um, especially in my later years, kind of went with. Um, now, there were some times where maybe an upper weight, like a 215, would go heavyweight instead of 215 or vice versa. But but for the most part, man, I, I you know, we try to get guys down to, um, you know, the lowest weight that they can legally go to uh, and safely go to. So, um and you did see that with him, uh, you know, as tough as he is, he hit that state level and, and I, I, you did see a little bit of that size factor, uh, you know, at the super regional kick in there. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I think uh, this year, you know, he could return at 126. I don't know. I don't know what he's weighing, but, and be a, be on the big side, hopefully for himself and, and capture a state title, you know, so. He, he's gotten bigger. I know that. I went to Central Dolphins practice um, last week. Didn't see him. He wasn't there. But I did. I have seen some pictures, and he's weighing in around 140 pounds right now. And where yeah. that leads him yeah. in the postseason, we'll see. Um, but, I mean, again – you draw it up differently. And I think maybe his postseason outcome is different because he runs into a state champ in Hempfield area is uh, Ethan Bergink, who is huge for the weight uh, yeah. and ends up losing there. I think he runs into a uh, kid, Luke Simcox, really bright looking um, kid from central mountain. Central mountain and, yeah. Yeah. If, if you're not wrestling those guys at the super regional, maybe you're skipping that round and maybe you're sure. fresher. Maybe you get a chance to get the, get the ball rolling a bit at the state championships. Matt Repos is the kind of kid who can be a state finalist. He could be a state finalist this year. He'll, he'll still just be a junior. So right, I'm looking forward right. to seeing what, what he's able to do. Uh, really good, skilled, good Matt awareness. Speaking of, of that, when you're talking about the Williams, I mean, he's the, yeah. he's the total yeah. pack I'm curious to see what he can do. A um, couple other kids I want to touch on real quick. Um, one is Dylan Rod- Rodenhaber from Redland. Um, look to me, you know, he in the blood round at Super Regionals uh, happened right in front of me. Um, ended up injuring his knee. I believe it was a uh, torn ACL, among other things, in that matchup. But he looked, speaking of that 215 versus 285, he looked really, really good at 285. And I was pretty confident that he was going to be a state uh, medalist of some kind, and then just had that taken away from him. Uh, the other one, uh, Leighton Schmick, who, um, you know, at, at sectionals, you had your guy, you know, one of the more bizarre scenes of the postseason was watching <laughs> your guys kill that 45 minute clock. Cause he had to wrestle back for that true second. And yeah, you got, yeah. you got Schmick in that round, but you know, Schmick's back road neighbors, not what'd you make of those two district three guys being, you know, really good heavyweights. Yeah, I mean, you talked about Rodenhaber, you know, that week, uh, you know, they came into individual season and uh, Brian brought him over to work out with Jake. So it was a great thing we had working there, like Jake and Rodenhaber along with Rustin. I mean, it was perfect. You know, those three went and, and this was some other guys that came in, too. And uh, I, I felt like, man, whenever that happened on that mat, it, it took a lot. I mean, it was awful. You know what I'm saying? And, and I agree with you. I think he was wrestling really well. Um, he was making it to the state tournament. Um, and that was, that was a shame to see that happen the way it did. And even, I'm going to even say like, even took some wind out of our sails. I mean, here's our, you know, the guy that we work out with, the guy that we train with, I mean, the way it's looking, we're both going to go to the state tournament. We have another week together. Let's keep this train rolling. And then all of a sudden, boom, it's over with. And, uh, but that being said, um, that kid looked darn good in the, in the districts, uh, you know, the week before it, when he beat Schmick in the finals. I mean, Schmick is a, is a good heavyweight, uh, in my opinion. I mean, he's built well. He's got nice size to him. He can wrestle, um, you know, all the above. And for him to handle Schmick the way he did in the finals there was pretty impressive. Um, but, uh, you know, this year moving back into the heavyweight category, Schmick's going to be a tough customer to, to compete with, man. And I feel like as a senior, he's, man, he's going to be tough. So, um, it'll be interesting to see that weight class. I know there's some other heavyweights around that, um, you know, plan to make some noise too. And, uh, you know, but he's going to be a guy you're going to have to go through to get it. So. All right, let's look at double A um, across district three and a few guys that, that really jumped out uh, one state champ, uh, another state runner up and a bronze medalist. So, the super regional edition, I wanted to touch on this too, is, um, you know, in double A, it's especially unique because you want to talk about you in triple A, you talked about the super regional and, and, and the odds of seeing those rematches in double A with so many guys moving on from sectionals to districts to regionals, then super regionals this time around. And then States, the odds of seeing the same guy three or four times are extraordinarily high. And there were some weights and we don't, I don't really need to get into all the different ones, but there were some weights where a lot of these look like toss up matches, you know, where it just, you just needed to be on the winning end in a certain blood round or, 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 
in the super regionals, you just, you had some, some minor surprises, you know, you had some guys surge and some guys not wrestle their best in super regionals. And so you ended up just with this interesting dynamic of just wrestling the same kid over and over and over again. Yeah. And even, even in consecutive days, I felt like the, the double A sectional was a Saturday and then districts was on a Sunday. So you could wrestle a guy on Saturday and turn around and wrestle him again in the final, you know, on the Sunday. And then, you know, you know, you're talking five different post season tournaments you know you're wrestling there from all the different you know and and again seeing the same guy over and over you know i I was looking at some brackets uh from last year just to kind of refresh for doing this and there there was some some guys some matchups that happened repeatedly you know what i mean and uh you know that is unfortunate again though i think the anomaly of a year that it was uh, you know uh, what do you do you do the best you can and, and try to at least at least at least we have a tournament and and move forward and and do the best you can, like I said. And and they they did that at, at the double A, triple A level. Um, is, is are people going to be upset about different things? Sure. Um, but again, we hope that this never has has to happen again, where we you know run you know two tournaments in two days uh, per se. And um, but yeah, it, it did offer some challenges for sure. So. I want to look at a, f- a few of these kids who did get state medals and, and starting with um, Michael Dugan, who he's an interesting one for you because you coached his older brother, Patrick, uh, you coached Francis, I believe for a year, his other older brother. And now he's at, at Michael's at boiling Springs and you saw him nice run. I mean, he lost in uh, the state, the state uh, tournament to the eventual state champ, Grant McKay from Laurel. I think that was a one, nothing match. But you saw Michael really start to realize um, a lot of the potential that he has. And one thing that really jumps out about Michael is that he is more so than most of your guy, your average wrestlers, a um, a student of the sport and somebody who is relentless in terms of what he's trying to do to get better. And you started to see the fruits of that labor last year. And he's still got, you know, he's still got a couple seasons left here, Dave, to to get climb even higher on that podium. Yeah, I, I talked to Trevor today and I asked Trevor, I said, what, uh, his coach Trevor Byers said, what makes him so special? What makes him so good? And Trevor's reply was his work ethic, you know, and, and I mean, you know, he's such a hard worker and he's very coachable and all that. I mean, my take on Michael Dugan is what he does well at the high school level is he understands and grasps the concept of pace, OK, and in high school, that's tough to teach because a lot of times in high school, you, you know, how many times does a Michael Dugan go the distance or how many times does Michael Dugan have to use his pace to beat somebody? Probably very little. Right. So it's tough to teach high school guys. Hey, you got to push the pace. You got to stay on his head. You got to you got to get that. and You got to go. That's going to beat the, the better guys. That that is something oftentimes learned in college. OK, and, and I feel like, you know, within Michael's case, he is using that as one of his tools at a young age. OK, that being said, when he does go and wrestle in college, that transition for Michael is going to be a lot easier than it is for for most because he, he grasps and understands that concept of how to push the pace. Right. And uh, and, and and again, like just a hard working, it seems to be very focused as well. So yeah, Fo- focused and mature are two words I would use without yeah. a doubt. And yeah. I think, um, I think being able to walk that line of realizing where your mistakes were or where your flaws were, uh, understanding what those are without beating yourself up over them, you yeah. know, being able to fo- focus on the th- areas that need work without dwelling and, and them turning into a negative. I think he does that, you know, from his, the way he speaks about it as well as anybody, you know, and yeah, I think you know something- wrestling is such a mind game too. You know what I mean? And, and, you know, you, you battle your confidence, you battle your, you know, what technique you should be doing, you know, you battle so much and to keep that focus and have that maturity like Michael does, I feel like is what kind of sets him apart, you know, and, um, you know, and, and pedigree too, you know, uh, you're going to, you know, talk pedigree with a lot of these guys, but, you know, I mean, the brothers, the, the understanding of, of, you know, how to win big matches and, and all that is important too. And um, I know that his brothers have a pretty big impact on him. So, um, you know, that obviously helps. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I, he is going to be back as far as I know at 152 pounds as, as a junior. That's, that's where he, that's correct. That's what, that's where he played. He, he won bronze last year should be his length, his pace. And when he's on his offense, he's going to be as good as anybody. And I oh, think you said um, it right there. I think that's the key to Michael staying on his offense. You know, I feel like when I've seen him lose, 
I've seen him kind of go more reserve, you know what I mean? And, and again, that's who you're wrestling. And I understand that. But um, if Michael consistently attacks, I mean, he's going to be tough to beat. Very tough to beat. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to seeing him, um, you know, what he's got in store for us as a junior. Yeah. Uh, Levi sure. Haynes from Biglerville won his first state title. And I don't know how much you've really tracked Levi from the jump, but certainly his pedigree was, was apparent right away. You know, yeah. I think you've yeah. crossed paths with him at some tournaments and stuff along the way, but two times state finalist before he got to the top of the mountain last year, he had lost to Sheldon Seymour from Troy, who was a multi-time state champion. He lost as a sophomore to Ryan Crookham, who, you know, nationally elite guy himself. And now last year, pretty dominant the entire way through the postseason to get that first state title at 138 pounds. And now it looks like just as an aside, Levi is look, I think he's going to be around 160 pounds. So he's, um, not afraid to keep climbing up that lineup. He's looking to be big, strong, and, and healthy as he can be. But uh, no secrets here about how good this kid was. And I think it was just a matter of time for him to get that state gold. Probably just a matter of time coming off a world team appearance and uh, winning at who's number one over the summer and pushing himself beyond the limits. I mean, that, you know, we talked about focus and maturity with Michael Dugan. Those would be two huge words to describe Levi Haynes as well. No, you're you're right. I mean, you mentioned me mentioned pedigree. Uh, you know, his his dad beat me in the state finals my junior year, and uh, was just a, a tough wrestler, big strong guy. And uh, again, like the, people need to understand something, man. When when it comes to pedigree, when 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 dad's a state champ or, or dad's a coach, and look, here's where it comes in, and that's expectations. Like when that kid walks out of that house, or that kid walks in that house from practice, like the expectations in that house are going to be different than most, right? Like your dad's coach, dad's a state champ, dad knows. Well, guess what? If you being good means that we have to run you up to M2 three days a week, well, then that's what we're going to do to do that and you're going to like it you know what i mean so yeah. the pedigree expectations that that means everything and uh again uh, you know now that being said uh you still have to do it like levi still has to go to the workouts he still has to buy in and dude he's a he's a, a tremendous wrestler and just was dominating last year uh, you know dominant performance in states i think he did he pinned a guy in the state finals too yeah. i believe and uh, you know just uh it's going to be exciting to see at the next level and uh you know, another guy that just keeps attacking. And, uh, you know, we had a year where two, two years ago, uh, David Taylor came down and did a, uh, a freestyle clinic in, at Cumber Valley. And, and Levi, obviously, being a member of at the M2 club, would come in a lot. And, uh, you know, he'd show up early and be changing into his shoes and all that. And I'd have a chance to sit and chat with him a little. What a nice kid, too. And, and, and look, here's the deal. I, I hope – listeners out there if your parents whatever like i hope you're understanding what we're saying here i mean all these kids that we're talking about that are really good and it's it something how we all say how you know for the most part they're all good kids right like you know yeah. the michael duke well he's mature he's a good kid he works hard well levi haynes he's a good kid he works hard um you know jake lucas state champ good kid he works hard like look winning and losing are byproducts of how you live your life off the mat Right. Like the things that you yeah. do outside of the wrestling room means so much as well. And these guys are good kids, man. They are they are nice kids. They are they are well mannered. Uh, but, man, I tell you what, you get them on the wrestling mat and <laughs> it is a totally different monster. Um, but uh, but no, I, I think Levi Haynes is is a phenomenal wrestler. And uh, again, man, I expect him to to grab another state title here for himself as well as District three and, and his hometown. So. And, and, and I think with him, you know, it was just interesting following along and, and thinking about uh, in terms of recruiting and getting to the next level, he wasn't necessarily in that elite of the elite recruits. Uh, right. you know, he wasn't in that category yet. Um, but what he's done and you can see the growth trajectory is because of his attitude and because how much he loves the grind of it and he, and he focuses on the process of it. You'll hear elite wrestlers all the time. And, and it's probably true of life and any other sport too, but just when you're focused on the process and yeah. not the results of it, especially in wrestling, it's the kind of thing that can pay dividends. Now you see him in that national elite of the elite. And when you talk about how elite he really is with that intangible mentality, mentality um, kind of thing. You can picture him now committed to Penn State. You can picture him in Kale Sanderson's program and only continuing to climb because when you get to that, and you can speak to this too, but when you get out of high school and into that college level, 
the amount of focus, the amount of commitment, the amount that you have to love the the grind of it can really separate whether you're going to be an All-American versus whether you're going to be a champ, whether you're going to be an NCAA qualifier or whether you're going to be an an All-American. And he's got that, that, uh, that intangible attribute at a extremely high level. And I think he's a perfect fit for Kale Sanderson. I I agree with you. I mean, he's a rare breed, right? Like, I mean, the, you know, the guys that are able to do that to, to grow and, and withstand it and accept the, the difficulty of the sport and make it part of who they are. And like you said, buy into the whole process thing. Um, They're, they're rare, very rare. And uh, you know, that kid is, has got it, going on uh, in the wrestling world, man. And he is, uh, he's going to be tough and he'll fit right into that mold up at Penn state too, right into it. So, um, and, and again, once he gets up there and those guys get your hands on, you know, they have their hands on you, you know, they make things happen. So um, I, again, I'm, I'm kind of excited to see where his career takes him. For sure. And just lastly on Levi, the, the three times a week to M2, that's two hour drive. So you think about four hours in a car. Co- commitment from Levi and also commitment from Ken yeah. to make that drive. And, and yeah. a- as a coach, you know, to, to, to be humble enough to say like th- David Taylor and that group up there can bring something to you and teach you in a way that I can't. So the humility as your coach and your dad to drive a four hour round trip, you know, to have somebody else coach your kid. I mean, I, I just no, found that part of impressive too. No, it is. And, and I mean, I think like, here's the deal coaches, right? It's not about you. Right. You know, I, you know, it's not about you. It's not about, you know, you know, and, and, and Ken, right. Being the wrestler that he was, he gets that. Like, great. Right? Like, I mean, you know, it's, it's not about you. It's not about you as a coach. It's about the kids. And, and, and uh, you know, I, I think Ken, you know, it's, it's a humility to it. Yeah. All that. But again, like, look, as a coach, if I, if I know somebody out there can come in and teach something better than I can teach it, whether that be a, a simple technique, let's say, you know, so-and-so can come in, he can teach how to get out of legs better than I can. Well, guess what? He's coming in my room. You know what I mean? Like, I, that's not, I don't care. It's not, nothing to do with me. Right. Like, I mean, and, and uh, coaches, if you if you're listening out there and you think it is about you, you're in it for the wrong reasons. So, um, you know, at the end of the day, uh, you know, put your athletes in the best position to get to improve, uh, to win and get better for sure. This uh, this sport's amazing because you talked about um, the humil- the common thread of humility and hardworking and being good kids like wrestling has a way of just knocking the ego right out of you. There are very few people that I've come across in my time, you know, covering the sport that have had issues with ego or pride or whatever. Wrestling is almost self-regulating in a way. It is. It is. And and then you add a little karma into the situation too. And it's always good. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. You know, I, and again, uh, you know, as good as you think you are, there's someone out there that's better. Right. Like, you know, even here we are talking about Haynes. I mean, he got upset in the finals of Super 32 this fall. You know, so, I mean, at the end of the day, what's that do for him? Well, I'll tell you what, it probably makes him work a little harder. You know, it makes all his opponents say, oh, no. You know what I mean? This kid just lost. Look out. You know, so, um, you know, yeah, you know, wrestling is again. uh, And that's why I love the sport. I I feel like of all the sports I've played, um, you know, I played football and, you know, definitely my, one of my favorites, it was fun baseball and soccer and different sports in my life. The sport of wrestling teaches you more about life than any other sport. I, 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 you know, I stand behind that comment and, you know, the ups and downs and, and learning how there's not too many times in my life as an adult that I've done anything more difficult than going through like conditioning at the end of wrestling practice. Right. Like, I mean, I'm serious. Like, you know, a coach sitting there blowing the whistle in your face, telling you after two hours of practice to get off the bottom. You know what I mean? To be down flat on your stomach, have a guy on top of you and know that like you have to work out of this for practice, like in order to leave this room. Like, you know, the man, it, it teaches you so much. And uh, as you know, uh, Dustin, and, and the cool part about that is you don't have to be an elite level wrestler to gain the values of the sport of wrestling. Right. Like you, you can be a you can be a first year wrestler. You can be a second year wrestler. You can wrestle JV your whole life. It doesn't matter. The fact that you are committed to the sport of wrestling is going to teach you more in life than any other sport. Any other. I mean, just the idea of getting pushed out of your comfort zone. And, and that's where the growth happens, whether yeah, you're, no you're talking about life or wrestling. Yeah. No doubt. 
no doubt. W- one of the one of the name quick I, I want to touch on just a fascinating case here. Uh, Riley Rebel from Bishop McDevitt, sophomore last year, was a state qualifier at 182 pounds. Well, guess what? He he set out to be the best football player and the best 285 pound kid he could possibly be in the span of less than one year. So you talk about his routine and all the shakes and stuff that he had to choke down to, to kind of make that jump. And he wrestled last year around a 250 pounds. Uh, he wrestled like a 180, uh, 182 pounder. Um, you saw how dominant he was and, and, um, you know, wrestled the, the Swinsky kid from Bermudian and, um, got to the state finals and ran into, you know, a different type of adversity when he got there. And, you know, as soon as he came off the mat, you know, I, I had a chance to talk to him and basically he said, you know, Nathan Taylor from Brookville was a senior. He had been in a little bit more of these elevated situations than, than Riley had been. And when it came to the state final, it was about, uh, pacing himself. He got himself too tired too quickly. And he just kind of admitted that he felt the pressure of the situation. I think it's just one of those things that you can't really quantify being right. a sophomore at a new weight and being in a new situation against a senior who had been there before. And it's understandable. It is. And man, on him, man, what a stud heavyweight. I mean, this guy, listen, sophomore, I think you said a 250 pound sophomore state runner up. You know, and I think his body type, how he wrestles, he's going to be a high-end recruit. You mark my words on that. I mean, he's going to be a heavily sought-after heavyweight. Um, so last year during the postseason, they would bring him over to once in a while to work out with. I told you that Jake and Roden Haber were there in, in our you know earlier conversation. Um, he would come over, and I mean, listen, I mean, he got the best of both those two at different times. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he was a bear on top. He was a right side mount. He was tough on top. He'd ride it, you know, his nice little inside wrist ride and, you know, and, and keep Jake down. You know what I mean? Jake couldn't get off the bottom. He's like, Jesus, coach, like, this guy is is big. He's strong. Like, yeah, yeah, he is, man. Um, and he's he's going to be you know, real tough to beat. And uh, I, I see him taking home a gold this year. I, I do. And, you know, and, and again, I'm, you know, I, can things happen? Sure. But if, if I had to put money on it, um, if I had to pick a heavyweight, it would, it would be him. And, uh, you know, he's just, and, and here's the deal for Mike and, and, and the Crusaders, you have him at heavyweight. That's six points you're getting every match, right? Uh, you have a good heavyweight. He's pinning people. So, you know, you have a good heavyweight like that, uh, as a team, um, yeah, sure. Individual wise, he's going to do tremendous, but for the team, I mean, he's going to collect six points. And like you said, in about 20 seconds, every match. So, um, <laughs> yeah. You know, the important thing for him, like we had talked about, is getting him good competition throughout the year. And I think I'll tell you what I'm excited to see this this uh, in a couple of weeks here at the Cumber Valley Kickoff Classic, the Nazareth heavyweight, uh, the McKinney kid who was a state runner up last year should have won it. And him. I mean, they, they that should be a good match, good heavyweight match at the Cumber Valley Kickoff Classic in a few weeks. So uh, you you just sold a few tickets there, right? Right there. Yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah uh, I might, I might have, I might have, I might have. So. As as well, you should. You have, you have the the Kenny kid who's now a sophomore, mm-hmm. uh, a little bit longer uh, than than Riley is. You have Riley who's going to be a junior, and what will be interesting is you know Bishop McDevitt. Uh, having played deep into the postseason in football and what he's doing on the football field and how close are you in that opening weekend to what you're going to be in March. You know, that'll be interesting to follow along with. And, you know, you talk about him being a a big time recruit as a heavyweight. He certainly looks like he's going to be a big time recruit as a a two way defensive lineman, offensive lineman as well. You know, he's going to be a kid. In 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 about a year, where he's going to get a he's going to get to pick his path, and how rare how rare that is to be able to kind of pick between two sports like that, kind of a testament to how good Riley Robel is in both of those sports. It is man, rare rare breed, and uh, again, a nice kid. You know, comes from a good family, and uh, you know, I, I feel like we'll you know be exciting to see where where he ends up and what he does here the next couple of years. Uh, but you know, look out on the gridiron and on the wrestling mat for that kid for sure. There you go. Dave Heckard helping us cover, you know, the 2020 and 2021 season here on the Penn Live Wrestling Podcast. We will be turning the page and looking ahead to the season coming up and some of these guys and in, in, in their um, situations and some of these teams. We'll look at divisions and all that stuff. Follow along all season, Spotify, Apple, and iHeartRadio. For Dave Heckard, I'm Dustin Hockensmith, and we will see you next time on the Penn Live Wrestling.